This is example 3.3 .3 on page 101 of our textbook. And here we're going to begin putting together what we've learned earlier in this chapter into writing formulas and naming compounds. So before we start worrying about naming, we're going to learn how to write formulas specifically for ionic compounds. Um, that's typically what you'll be using more um, frequently and it's a little bit easier to figure out than molecular compounds. So question asks us to write the formula for the ionic compound that forms between aluminum and oxygen. So step one for this is to figure out what happens when aluminum becomes an ion. And so we address this a little bit in chapter two. Remember, there are elements that adopt certain charges as um, ions when they either lose or gain electrons. So aluminum is one of our very predictable um, elements, and it always typically forms aluminum three plus, meaning that it loses three electrons. This is called a cation because it's becoming more positive, and typically metals become cations, nonmetals become anions. So our second step is to write the symbol of our nonmetal element as an ion. So if aluminum was our metal, oxygen is our nonmetal. So oxygen is once again another um, easily predictable ion that has the same charge. So when oxygen forms an ion, it always gains two electrons to become O2 minus. So we have both of our ions written. Now the third step is to basically figure out how these two charges are going to balance with one another. Because whenever we have an ionic compound, the overall charge has to be neutral. But we currently have an aluminum with a three plus charge and an oxygen with a two minus charge. So we have to basically add a certain number of either oxygens or aluminum atoms or both so that their charges are going to cancel out. So one of the easiest methods for figuring out how many oxygen atoms we have and how many aluminum atoms we're going to have, or for any compound, not just this one, is called the crisscross rule. So if we rewrite aluminum 3 plus and oxygen 2 minus right next to each other, we can do the crisscross rule, which basically says that the numbers, numbers only, not the charges, crisscross, they come down to become subscripts on the other opposite atom. So like the two on the oxygen comes down to become the subscript two on the aluminum. The three on the aluminum comes down to become the subscript three on the oxygen. So then we would have something like Al2O3. And in this rule, we kind of not necessarily ignore the charges, but we don't write them in the compound um, formula. It's just the superscripts that become subscripts based on the crisscross method. Now, if that one doesn't make sense to you, you can think about it mathematically. So if we have an aluminum with a 3 plus charge and an oxygen with a 2 minus charge, what can we multiply each of these elements by to get the charges to equal? So let's say I'm trying to get my oxygen and my aluminum charges to both equal one another to cancel. If I add another aluminum, that's going to give me an overall charge of 6 plus. 3 plus plus 3 plus is 6 plus. 
which means in order to cancel that, I would need to have three O2 minuses. O2 minus, O2 minus, if we add two minus plus two minus plus two minus, that's gonna give me six minus. And aluminum would be six plus. And then if we were to count up, we have one, two aluminum, so it's Al2, and one, two, three oxygens, so it becomes O3. So see, either way we approach it gives you the same answer, whatever makes more sense to you in your head. So then step four is basically, if we need to reduce this um, ratio, we can. So let's say we had PB2O4. Well, all ionic compounds have to be empirical formulas, meaning that they they have to have the smallest whole number ratio. So if we had PB2O4, that would become PBO2. In our case of aluminum two, oxygen three, we can't reduce that any further. So we leave it alone. So four is reduce if necessary. We just did that. And step five is to check to make sure that our charges are gonna cancel out. So if I have two aluminums, Al3+, plus, Al3+, plus, that gives me an overall charge of plus six. And if I have three oxygens, O2 minus, O2 minus, O2 minus, that's gonna give me an overall charge of minus six. If you add the two of those together, it's going to be zero, AK neutral, and that checks out. So your final answer for writing the formula for this is Al2O3. There's no positives or negatives anywhere in this formula. It's just indicating how many of each element we have needed to get to a neutral compound.